if your parent hasn't started showing symptoms and they are in their 70s, you are clear from HD. Myth. So this is one of those that is pretty decisive. We don't have to split it. Myth. And all three of us, Stacy, Tom, and I have seen incidences where it's the child in the family who may be the first identified person with clinically symptomatic Huntington's disease and their parents maybe uh, never showed symptoms into their 70s or even 80s and, and beyond. One of those instances can be if the affected parent has a repeat that may be 38, 39, or even sometimes 40, but a lower repeat, and they are not clinically symptomatic during their lifetime. And uh, I say clinically symptomatic because, you know, there still is an awful lot of diagnosis going on with motor testing, even though we know changes in thinking and mood can occur many years before that. And people may have those features and it's not recognized and never diagnosed. So the bottom line, the answer to that is you aren't in the clear even though your parents are in your 70s and definitive testing, either predictive or confirmatory, would need to be done to give you the answer yes or no. Tom, yeah, you I, thank you, Terry. And I really, because I read doc, Dr. Bird's book and I follow him, <laughs> I think so. I may know this answer already, but Dr. Bird, can you please tell us the youngest person you've seen in your clinic diagnosed and the oldest? So the youngest probably had his onset around four years old. And the oldest was the man I just mentioned, who lived to be 93. And his symptoms probably developed in his 80s. And as Terry said, his CAG expansion was 39. So it was in that range where you expect, if they're gonna be symptomatic, it's likely to be older. And, and just a couple more comments about that. It's a real interesting phenomenon. So his family, because he had chorea, that's why the genetic test got done. And his family was shocked because he had no family history of it. They said, how is that possible? And it turns out he did have a family history of, quote, dementia. And we were able to get his father's medical record. And his father did indeed have dementia. His father lived into his 80s. And his medical record showed that he had a movement disorder that they never diagnosed. They didn't know why he had the movement disorder. And it was so many years ago, it was back in the age where this myth that we just got asked about was believed by the medical community. I was trained, you may have noticed that I'm not a young person, and I was trained as a neurology resident that if you got beyond age 60, you weren't gonna, be, you weren't gonna develop Huntington's disease. Yeah. I remember that. And, there, and we also were trained that there was this unusual condition that was called senile chorea. And it was elderly people who had chorea and no one knew why. And so if you saw an elderly person with chorea, you called it senile chorea. And, if, and they often had no family history of it. Uh, and as soon as the Huntington gene was discovered and identified, people in actually in Great Britain rounded up a whole bunch of patients with a diagnosis of senile chorea, and they tested them for Huntington's disease, and almost all of them were positive. <laughs> and so senile chorea that we had been told about, in fact, was just late onset Huntington's disease. So the, the genetic test made a huge difference in recognizing that this disease can be symptomatic late in life, and that really wasn't recognized before the gene test was discovered. This is not a game you want to win, but I think I can one-up Dr. Bird. So <laughs> our youngest patient in our clinic was diagnosed at 18 months. Wow. Diagnosed at 18 months. Wow. Stacy, just briefly, I know that Katie hasn't given us, give, giving us, excuse me, Katie has not given us any time warning bells yet, but <laughs> it, it, how... Just briefly, can you tell us how, what the circumstances are that you test an 18-month-old? Yeah, so this was before my time, so I'm having to go with my recollection of what happened prior to me actually being part of it. But she had a loss of milestones. Now, of course, at 18 months, 
you don't have a whole lot of milestones you've hit, but you have quite a few. And so there was a loss of milestones. There were seizures. She also had a father with known juvenile Huntington's himself. He died about the age of 20. So I think when you put that whole picture together, it was a yeah. reasonable thing to do. And when she was tested, the genetic came back, test came back as repeats greater than 200. They couldn't give an exact number. Yeah. Right. In, in our case, the repeat number, it got tested several times because no one was sure how accurate it could be at those high levels. But our case, the result varied between 140 and 165. Exactly. And the seizure piece is interesting too. It's said that seizures are more common in juvenile Huntington's. And juvenile Huntington's now is defined as onset before the age of 20. And it turns out that that seizure piece is true, but it's almost all confined to those who have onset before the age of 10. So it's the really young juvenile cases that often have seizures but the adolescent cases often do not.